Welcome, world changers. My name is Alondra, and I am so excited that you are here with us today. Today, we're going to be learning about fear versus the Holy Spirit. By the end of this lesson, you'll understand that there is no real competition because nothing can compete against the power that has been given to you by the Holy Spirit. Grab your Bible and get ready to encounter God with me today. But first, let's pray and thank God for His Word. Father God, thank you for your Word. I declare that I have ears to hear, a mind to understand, a heart that is open, and the discipline to be a doer of the Word of God. Speak, Lord. Your servant is listening. In Jesus' name, amen. Open your Bible to the New Testament book of 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, and let's read. Are you ready? For God did not give us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. Fear is a spirit that's meant to distract you from the truth and the power of God. Fear is a weak spirit that can keep you from engaging to the nature of who God is. And we know that God is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. The Word of God tells us in our memory verse that God has given us power, but not just any power. According to Acts 1.8, you will receive dunamis power when Holy Spirit comes upon you. Dunamis power is a miraculous, miracle-working power. This power is strong, and it's a God tool. It's like dynamite. And just like dynamite destroys anything that's next to it, nothing can stand against God's power. This is why we say, fear, go. <laughs> Understanding the power of Holy Spirit that's working on the inside of us will make us confident in saying, fear, go. Another tool that God has given us is love. Did you know that God is love? 1 John 4, 8 says that perfect love, God's love, cast out all fear. And when we are in God's presence and in His love, fear cannot exist. And we're able to experience a sound mind. You might be wondering, how do I stay in His presence and activate the power that has been given to me? Well, we do this by encountering Him daily through praying in the Spirit, reading your word, and praising and worshiping His name. It's important that we understand that on our own, without the Holy Spirit, without the love of God, we can do nothing. No matter how strong you are, how smart you are, what tools you may have, your talents, your gifts, the family that you belong to, you can do nothing without the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. But in God, through the dunamis power that comes from Holy Spirit, you can do anything the Father asks you to do. This reminds me of a man in the Bible by the name of Gideon. Gideon was a man that belonged to a family that wasn't seen as important or strong or able to do anything big. Gideon knew that on his own, he could do nothing in his own strength. He didn't stand out. And honestly, no one even noticed Gideon. No one except for God. One day, an angel of the Lord came to Gideon and called him by a name that no one had ever called him before. And he was empowered by God to do something big. I can't wait for you to hear this story or the name that the angel called him. But first, let's go over to Stephanie for our memory verse. Hey guys, welcome back to Steph Space. I'm like Steph and I'm so excited that you are here with me. We are about to talk about our memory verse. I was I knew I left my socks in here. Um, excuse us, Steven. What do you think you're doing? Uh, I'm just getting my socks because I need something to clean up the ramen that I spilled. Ew, Steven. You are like so gross. This is my space and I say that you need to go. Okay, but mama said that I can use the camera next. For what? Your butter sculpture channel? No one even watches that, Steven. I have 
three subscribers. Thank you very much. Disregardless, Steven, this is my room, and Mom said to wait your turn. Okay, fine. Just whenever you're done, give me the camera, okay? <sighs> Anyways, let's, like, go over our memory verse, okay? Repeat after me. For God did not give us a spirit of fear, ew, but of power and of love and a sound mind. Second Timothy 1, 7. Like, great job. Thanks for watching. Make sure to smash that like button and we will see you next time. Sparkle and shine on. Changers, my name is Joy and I'm here with my good friend Buttons. Hi! We are going to be telling you the story of Gideon. Gideon, yeah! From Judges chapter 6. Judges chapter 6. 
Are you ready, Buttons? Oh, I'm so ready. I'm so ready, Joy. Oh, it's gonna be awesome. <laughs> okay. Long ago in Israel, the people were not obeying God. So God allowed another group of people called the Midianites to take over the territory of the Israelites. The Midianites took their food and their animals, but the Israelites cried out to God for help because the Midianites left them poor and hungry. Oh no, God help us. <laughs> oh, man, you know what? If I was an Israelite, I would have been like, hey, hey, boys, you want some of this? You want some of this? Oh yeah? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm not afraid of you, Midianites. <laughs> Yeah, but the Israelites were afraid. Mm -hmm. But God chose a man named Gideon to help his people. Gideon's family wasn't very strong in the eyes of the world. Well, you mean like they were weak? Like, like they didn't even go to the gym or work out or anything? You gotta hit that gym, bro! Yeah! Yeah! Kind of. See, Gideon's family wasn't known for being a big, strong family that could fight well. They weren't warriors. In fact, his family wasn't seen as important in the land. Well then, well, why did God choose him? I mean, if you're gonna go fight in a war, you wanna have the biggest, strongest people with the biggest and best weapons, right? That may seem like the best idea, but God had a better idea. Oh, and, and God's ideas are always better than our ideas. Like cooking hamburger patties in the toaster. That's not a good idea. That's right. That's not a very good idea. Yeah. But when I put out the fire, they were delicious. <laughs> I bet they were buttons. Yeah. Gideon was afraid of the Midianites and was hiding from them. What? Seriously, bro? But God sent an angel to tell Gideon that he had chosen him to strike down the Midianites. <laughs> you are a mighty warrior, said the angel. Gideon couldn't believe the angel called him a mighty warrior. Gideon was shocked. God told him to tear down an altar to Baal in the village and build a new altar to God. Gideon obeyed God and along with a few servants, they tore down the altar in the dark of night. Yeah, covert operations. We're going black ops. Did Gideon have night vision? What kind of weapon systems was he working with? <laughs> Not sure that he had any weapons. In the morning, the villagers saw the altar destroyed and they wanted to attack Gideon for what he had done. But God protected Gideon. Gideon still couldn't believe that he was chosen by God to strike down the Midianites. He asked for a sign to prove that it was truly God calling him to do this. Well, I don't know, Gideon. Maybe the, um, the angel that visited you was a sign, you think? Yes, but Gideon was still unsure. Sometimes when God tells us to do something, we can feel fear. We may feel like we aren't strong enough to do what God has asked or brave enough. That's when we have to put our trust and faith in him and his plan. Gideon put a piece of wool on the ground and prayed, if in the morning the fleece is wet, but the ground is dry, then I will know that you will give me the strength to save your people. In the morning, the fleece was soaking wet and the ground was dry. Well, there you go. Time to go to war! Well, Gideon still wasn't convinced. Oh, come on! Gideon said, tomorrow let the fleece be dry and the ground wet. And it was so. Gideon's response to God was, I will do whatever you call me to do. Okay, Gideon, it's about time to war! I want a lightsaber! These are not the Israelites you're looking for. Charge! Gideon rallied an army of over 30,000 men. God spoke to Gideon and said, you have too many men. Well, wait, hang on, isn't too many men a good thing? Well, God said to Gideon, I do not want my people to think they have won this battle in their own strength. Tell everyone who is afraid to fight to go home. After Gideon spoke to the army, 10,000 men remained. What? So 20,000 men went home? Cowards. But that's okay, that's okay. We can still make 10,000 work. Well, God said there are still too many men. What? God showed Gideon how he could win the battle with only 300 men. Fighter jets. No. Attack sharks? No. Fighter jets that are made out of sharks. Not quite. 
They weren't going to need an attack animal or powerful weapons. Remember, they had God with them. Oh yeah, and, and God is way more powerful than a fighter jet. Yes. That night, fear started to rise up within Gideon when he looked down at the Sea of Midianites' tents. God knew he was afraid and told him to sneak up on the enemy's camp. When he arrived on their campground, he overheard the soldiers talking about having dreams of losing the battle. Gideon returned to his men and encouraged them to be courageous, for God was with them. Yeah! Let's go fight! God's gonna strike them all down with lightning! Lord! Give me a flaming sword to smite my enemies! Did Gideon have a flaming sword? No, actually, Gideon gave his men trumpets and empty jars with torches inside. <gasps> to burn their enemies! Not quite. Mm. At Gideon's signal, the soldiers sounded their trumpets, smashed the jars, and shouted out loud. Yeah! When Gideon and his men broke the clay jars and shouted, the Midianites became confused and started running because they were afraid and even attacked and killed each other. Oh no! What's going on? Oh, there's a man coming! Oh, stab! Oh! Oh, Chad! Chad, why would you do that to me? I didn't know it was you. Oh, yeah, well, guess what? Ah! Oh, oh, Rick! Why, Rick? Oh, oh, and, and we're brothers! Oh! I'm, I'm dying! Oh, oh. Gideon didn't have to be a big, strong warrior. He didn't need to be a great commander or a battle strategist. All he needed was God's presence and faith in God. Wow. And, and, when, and, and we aren't afraid when we have God with us, right? That's right, Buttons. The end. Wow, what a great story. I'm going to go get a clay pot and a torch, and it's going to be so funny waking up my dad the way that Gideon did that to the Midianites. Buttons, I don't think that's such a good idea. It's a great idea. To battle! Um, I'm going to go make sure Buttons doesn't get into trouble. I'll see you later, world changers. Buttons, wait! When Gideon engaged in fear, he was leaning on his own understanding. He couldn't make sense of how on his own he could accomplish what God was asking and empowering him to do. If you can make sense of how something will happen and if you can figure it out on your own, that doesn't require faith. And without faith, it is impossible to please God. Gideon gathered a large army of men because in his own understanding, this is how he would win the battle. But God was looking for Gideon to fully depend on God's hand and not his own. God wanted the other men to acknowledge that what gained Gideon's victory was the hand of God. We were created to fully depend on God and to have faith in God. Take a minute and ask Holy Spirit to show you if you haven't been using the tools that Father God has given you of power and love. Ask Holy Spirit to show you if you have been allowing fear to hold you back from doing what God asks you to do. If the Holy Spirit is highlighting something to you right now, all you have to do is ask for forgiveness by praying this prayer of forgiveness. Close your eyes and put your hands out like you're receiving a gift. Father God, forgive me for fear and doubt. I choose today to be led by you, by the dunamis power that you have given me. I choose today to walk in obedience in all that you ask me to do. In Jesus' name, Amen. Great job, world changers. Asking for forgiveness is a sign of just how strong you really are. Strong leaders can admit when they are wrong and need forgiveness. If you have never accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, all you have to do is call out to Him, ask for forgiveness, and believe in your heart. Confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord. If you want that today, if you want to be a part of God's family and experience His presence and receive the gift of Holy Spirit, just repeat this after me. 
And if you've already accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, but you haven't thanked him or spoken to him in a while, I want you to pray this out loud with me too. Jesus, I believe you are the Son of God. Thank you for dying on the cross for my sins. You rose again, and because of that, I have victory. Thank you for coming into my heart today and being my Lord and King. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer just now and you meant it, I am so proud of you. The Bible says that all of heaven celebrates when one person accepts Jesus. All of heaven is celebrating you right now. I want you to share it with someone. Tell someone the good news. Always remember to read your Bible, pray in your heavenly language, and invite the presence of God into your life with thanksgiving and praise and worship. I love you guys. I can't wait to be with you next time.